All right, well, Awesome Kong moves ahead to the semifinal round. Now, there's six trucks in this round of competition as we watch Bigfoot come out. So the quick loser out of this round will also go to the semi to even the numbers. Bigfoot, Andy Brass is the driver, ready for his run. Now, there's another man here in the stadium that absolutely loves trucks. And earlier, Steve ran into it. Paul, only a couple of times a year are you and I privileged to uh, hang around beautiful iron like this truck here on the floor of the Astrodome. But an old friend of ours, Ed Bruce, the original host of American Sports Cavalcade, is making kind of a semi-career out of trucks. As you may know, his new show on TNN, Trucking USA, is making a big splash. Congratulations. It looks great. Thank you, partner. Good How you doing? Hey, it's good to see you. Okay, what are you doing here? Well, we're here for the same reason you are, here covering this uh, TNT thing. What can we expect uh, in the next uh, shows of Trucking USA? Well, we're traveling all around the country, kind of a hillbilly Charles Corral, <laughs> you know, and uh, doing some performance ads. We're going to do some off-road racing. Uh, we're doing some old truck museums. We have seen some fantastic trucks at these old truck museums. And meeting some interesting characters that just, you know, people send in their custom trucks, and uh, we've seen some great trucks. A little travelogue to boot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great, uh, fantastic scenery. We're in uh, Sedona in the Red Rock country, and uh, just beautiful. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you, buddy. Well, good to see you. Ed Bruce and Chuck in USA. Tune in on Sports Sundays on TNN. If you love trucks, it's a show to watch. If you love the monster trucks, we'll take a look at the Carolina Crusher. Ready to face Bigfoot. And nobody has to tell Gary Porter what a task that can be. Gary from Waysboro, North Carolina. And he's up against, well, the most popular monster truck of them all. This one being driven by Andy Brass. I say this one because there are 10 Bigfoot trucks on any given weekend competing all over the country. Owner Bob Chandler has created a true phenomenon. And nobody is more dedicated to safety than Chandler and leadership as this competition gets more serious. It has to give Andy Brass a psychological advantage over the Carolina Crusher in the near lane. Gary Porter's got to be thinking about all the research, all of the technology that goes into that machine. Green light, both machines come off the line. The big foot in the far lane picks up a slight advantage on the first straight. Carolina Crusher cocks off to the side just a little bit, tries to get around the corner using all of the brakes and the four-wheel steer. But now, Bigfoot with a very definite advantage. Apparently, the Crusher had some driveline problems as he tried to execute that turn. And look at Bigfoot. What a showy leap to finish off this victory and move to the semifinal round. Andy Brass and Bigfoot, always a very reliable truck. Not so some of the competition. They may be a little more powerful sometimes, but the reliability is the problem. Gary Porter and the Crusher had his problems here, got all the way off the edge of the course trying to get it to come around. And then as he tried to chase Bigfoot down, well, there was no catching the high-leaping Bigfoot as it was Andy Brass with the victory. Well, Paul, we have climbed our trusty ladder to find out if Bigfoot has any fallen arches. It sure doesn't look like it, Andy. Uh, it looks like we're going to be doing pretty good tonight. You know, I'm trying to stay with it and everything. Cars are getting beat down flat and everybody's been running pretty good. Yeah, I think that was the altitude record, though, over the last set of cars for tonight, anyway. Yeah, and I just got lined up with it pretty good, you know, and it, it, it was looking good. I thought, well, I might as well go for it. Uh, and did you always go for it? Yeah, we try. You know, I'm, I noticed you're wearing this brace right here. Tell us about it. This here's one of the shoulder straps, you know. It's just, I wear a four-point uh, seat seat harness with me, and, and this is just part of it. Okay, see you in the semi. Uh, I hope so. Andy Brass and Bigfoot moves ahead to the semifinal round. Take a look at the cars. With all the action tonight, they're definitely getting crushed down. We'll be back with more. Stay up to the rafters, and they're enjoying the tractor pulling and the monster truck racing, as well as the occasional exhibition vehicle. The front wheel of any old all-terrain cycle, right? Well, not exactly. An ATC for Paul Bunyan or the Jolly Green Giant, maybe. I'll tell you, this is a one-off exhibition vehicle, the Thunderous Cyclops, an ATC that weighs 8,300 pounds, is 10 feet from the ground to the tip of the handlebar, and is powered by a 1,200-horsepower supercharged Keith Black racing engine. And as you may know, I have sat in some pretty bizarre vehicles, but you know, once you settle down inside the old clops, the controls are pretty comfortable. They're very typical of any pulling vehicle. Uh, the steering is pretty unique. As you might imagine, it's a little hard to reach the handlebars. So Clifford Smith, the owner, engineer, and builder, you hear that little motor running in the background? That's an 1,100cc Honda Shadow gas engine. It powers a hydraulic system. Look at this, okay? I'm just turning a typical little steering wheel in here. The front wheel goes round and round. 
but there's one other obstacle to controlling the collapse. That is, you can't see a darn thing out of it. So what Clevert has done, the computer-operated headlight up front has a video camera built in. Pretty sneaky, huh? Here's the monitor right here. Shows you the clear track ahead. No problem whatsoever. You know, if you'd like to have one of these, do just what Clifford did. Invest about 4,500 man hours, a lot of imagination, and get a great big second trust deed on your house. Well, it looks great, but how is it as a puller? Well, let's take a look, because there's the Cyclops and young Cliff Smith. That's Clifton, Clifford's son, and he's going to take it for a shot down the course. Now, they've got the Cyclops hooked to the decision maker, and certainly it's got to be a lot of power for most uh, competitive machines, but not at this point. We've seen tractors with as many as four engines bigger than that. So, young Clifton has got his work cut out for him if he's to pull that big hunk of iron, steel, and lead. New concept, new idea. This could open up a whole new realm of tractor pulling. Let's see if Cliff Smith can get her down the course as he powers her up. Begins a pretty good pull here. The back wheels digging in. The front end way up in the air. Balance a bit of a problem. Now he slams it down. The sled kind of gives it a kick. Ooh, back to the drawing board. Maybe he had that television screen tuned up to the wrong channel. Is that possible? Well, one thing's for sure, everybody, especially the kids in the audience here at the Astrodome, got a real kick out of seeing the thunderous Cyclops. What a piece. I'll tell you, talking about uh, exciting machines, well, look at this beautiful monster truck. Maybe the prettiest one of them all, Nightlight 2. And, you know, the horsepower is incredible, but so is the weight, topping 30,000 pounds. And look at all of the shock absorbers underneath Nightlight 2. On some of them, I have counted, Paul, as many as 40 shock absorbers just trying to keep these things all in one piece. Uh, Clydesdale, another supercharged Chevrolet, makes somewhere around 1,000 horsepower. As you mentioned earlier, they have four-wheel steering. The rear wheel steer is separate from the front, hydraulically operated from the cockpit. And one of the finest drivers is Bennett Clark. He's been monster truck racing as long as there's been such a category from Georgia. Up against Dave Wazurik in the Nightlife 2 from Grand Island, Nebraska. Also a very accomplished driver. And don't think it doesn't take talent to wheel one of these machines, especially now that they're no longer just exhibition crushing a few cars as a promotional gimmick. This is serious motorsports competition. And just like any motorsport, balance, coordination, a little bit of guts, and some daring. Nightlife 2 gets to the corner first. Trying to close the distance, but it's Nightlife 2 that's onto the second straightaway. Begins to accelerate now. Nice big jump into the air. Presses a few cars. It's a little off balance, but no question about the victory here. It goes to Nightlife 2 without any question over Bennett Clark. And the secret to the victory again for Nightlife 2 is hugging that burn in tight. It's a short wheelbase truck. He can get away with that. Clark got to the corner a little bit late. Nightlife 2 back to the second group of cars. Way up in the air. The crowd loved it. And it is Dave Wazorek that comes home with a victory in Nightlife 2. Well, Dave, I don't know if that wind got you pumped up, but this crowd went wild. Tremendous. Well, I've, I've got a pretty good run going for me, and I'm running through the right lane, so I'm just going to keep it going and do the best again. You know, it would appear to be one of the secrets, obviously, is making a smooth turn at the end and not scrubbing off too much speed. It is. It, it's trying to get around that corner without losing control of your truck, and it's, it's a tough thing to do when you're running two things at one time. It's like rubbing your head and your stomach at the same time. That meaning front wheel steering and rear wheel steering. That's right, yeah. It, it takes a lot of coordination to get it around that corner and get straightened out for them cars. Well, you did it that time like the pro you are. Thank you. All right. All right, so the stage is set for the semi-final run in monster truck competition here in the Astrodome. Awesome Kong will take on Nightlife 2. And in the second part of the semi-final, Bigfoot will face Clydesdale 2. Now, you just saw Clydesdale 2 lose, but it will go in as a result of being the quickest loser. Well, the fellas involved in the 7,200-pound modified pull-off better tune up their motors because Ron Hickson and Drew are loading up the sled.